Well, hey there, Gideon's Tactical friends and family. Thanks for coming back to another gear review here at the channel, and particularly another blade review. You know how much I love and you love blades. And we're gonna have some fun today. We're out here with the family. The family's right behind me, just hanging out. Uh, we went for a nice drive as the leaves are changing here in autumn, here in the Rocky Mountains. And uh, now we just found a good little kind of picnic area been having some fun with the kids and figured I'd take some time just to show you guys this Gerber Gator knife. Um, I bought this totally on a whim. Uh, I saw it on a crazy sale. It was $26 over on Amazon. The normal going rate when you go to like a sporting goods store or regular on Amazon is closer to like the $40 price point. Um, so we'll talk, you know, competitive options down the line a little bit, but we will have links for you guys if that's something you want to take a look at. And, uh, you know, if you can find it under 40 bucks, um, I'll tell you, I'll kind of spoil it right now. I think you, if you like the idea of what this has to offer, I think you will not be disappointed. And even at that $40 price point, it is very competitive to a lot of stuff out there. Now, a while ago, we reviewed the Gerber Gator Premium line, which is their premium S30V versions of the Gator series, which has been around since the early 90s. So this is a kind of a staple in the Gerber series for hunting and just general camp use is kind of the idea with this series and with this line. And uh, this is kind of the, the one that started it all, the basic, made out of 420 high carbon steel, uh, made right here in the USA. So what is a little bit different and kind of what made me gravitate to it is that it's like this really lightweight, compact belt knife. Um, it's about four inches long, overall blade length, about 3.7, 3.6 on the actual cutting edge. You got a nice thin stock, but it is a full tang all the way through. And you can actually see it through the lanyard hole back there. So it's very robust in that sense um, for a little lightweight, compact fixed blade. Um, you got a big Ricasso here, not quite a finger choil. You could, you know, use a little belt grinder or something and kind of, you know, belt grind that out to a full choil if you wanted to. Um, and it does have a shallow hollow grind. And so that's something that uh, made me kind of gravitate to it and want to try it out as well, because it's very similar in size, weight class, and on many levels, even performance to uh, Mora's, you know, Mora knives. And, you know, most of us who are into knives, we've heard of them. You know, you can get particularly between 15 and 25 bucks, almost like three fourths of the entire Mora line that exists out there. And they have lots of different steel options, but they all come with Scandi grinds, which I love using for woodworking, but I do not like using for food prep. And so the reason I wanted to use this as well is not only just see how it would do as a general, just kind of camp woods craft tool, making feather sticks, making spear points, you know, making some notches, splitting a little bit of kindling if I had to, but also how how would it do with food prep and you know would this be a better carry on your belt you know you're rving your car camping or you're a backpacker or hiker and you want something that can do a lot of food prep but also do some woods craft would this possibly be uh, at least a competitive if not even sometimes better option than a mora that's kind of in mind with what i wanted to take a look at so let's look at the gator handle that's what gives it its name it has texturing that looks very much like crocodile or alligator skin it's kind of the idea. It's a rubber overmold over that full tang construction. And I got to tell you, I love it. It feels so warm to the touch. It's nice and full, very rounded. Even that little cut in right there just really grips my large size hands very nicely with room to spare. So it doesn't feel um, too narrow, too thin. You know, compact knives like this sometimes, fixed blades, they can kind of feel more like a pocket knife and you want that fuller feel. And the texture is so grippy, regardless if you were cleaning game, um, you know, your hands are just wet from doing something else, whatever it may be, just sweat, you are gonna grip this knife so well. And then because of that little nice flare out on that guard, you have no concern about sliding up, hurting yourself or giving yourself an injury in any way, even in a reverse grip you're really, really locked into place. So I really like the handle ergonomics. I could even do reverse grips, pull lever grips in a bushcraft stance and you know get a different type of cut in and it felt fine and felt really comfortable. And actually, if I can show you here, just contoured well into my hand and created zero, zero hot spots with that nice lanyard hole there if you did wanna throw a little lanyard on there. Um, and it, it just feels very good and has that very natural sweep into your hand when you grip the hand. It just feels very organic and ergonomic. And so that's a huge selling point to the entire Gator line. I mean, regardless if it's the premiums or these, that you have this very comfortable, very contoured grip so that you can use it for an extended period of time. It's not gonna get slick and it's not gonna fatigue your hand. Now for the blade, I love that just classic drop point. You can't complain. Um, you know, hollow grind is never my preference. It's not something I go out of my way to find. Um, but, you know, up until really honestly, 
the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years, most knives were done in a hollow grind. It's only recently that full flats and sabers have become more popular on more and more, you know, um, designs. Most, you know, fixed blades, they were designed to clean game, maybe do some wood carving, you know, things like that. And that was about it. You know, not all this batoning and chopping down trees. And, you know, I value my blades that can do that, but uh, that was not necessarily the initial intent. This hollow grind has a good robust tip for the thickness of the blade compared to some, some of are like paper thin. This is nice. I mean, don't be cranking on it and prying on it, but you know, it's got a good robust look to it and strength to it there. And then again, that hollow grind is somewhat shallow, so it doesn't have like this huge shoulder. So for Woodscraft right out of the gate, fantastic. Um, it was very close to any of my Moras in that sense. And this was the factory relief edge. I didn't resharpen it. I didn't tune it up. Nothing like that. Literally out of the box. Let's sort of start working with it. And what you see is what you get. It's holding up well. I haven't had to tune it up as of yet when it does come time to tune it up because I've had many other 420 high carbons from Gerber. It's very easy to do so. Um, so uh, rather rust resistant as well. It does have a little bit of like a not a powder coat, I don't think, but just a coating on there. It does not have a 90 degree spine. It's got a rounded spine, but you could easily, if that's something you're into, you know, um, round that off with a grinder very easily because of the softer 420 compared to say some premium steel. Uh, I would have liked to have the blade a little bit further in there. Uh, I could use this as a choil, but honestly, if that was something I was gonna regularly do, I would wanna just put this up against a belt sander and just kind of sand that off a little bit. Just, just give me a little bit more grip. But if it had come in just about a quarter inch, that would have been perfect. It's fine. I don't have an issue with it. Um, but yeah, I mean, Woodscraft, absolutely great. And then just general utility, cord cutting, all that stuff. The hollow grind works really well. Then food prep absolutely outperforms any Scandi Ground, Mora, or, you know, Fin Hawk or other brands that I have uh, just because of the edge geometry and the grinding. You know, it's just designed to slice through meat and vegetables and fruit and things like that way easier and just will be a more enjoyable experience when you are working in your camp kitchen preparing food or if you were using this to prepare your game and guys at this point i do want to hear also from you guys that already currently own the gerber gator particularly this original one and what has been your experience you hunters you guys who've been using it as your you know general belt knife i love reading the comments i know the other viewers do as well what's been your experience i know when i was posting some of the instagram photos some of you guys were commenting that you've had this since like the late 90s and you clean game with it every single year and you love it so um just want to hear from you guys what's been your experience you know overall with this blade and this design all right guys so we're going to take a look here at the sheath you know that's a massive important part of any knife i don't care how budget friendly it is i don't care how expensive it is it's got to have you know a sheath that at least is doable so uh what this knife has going for it is i'm kind of mixed on there are some aspects i'm like yeah that's pretty good particularly for what i paid for it um and there's some aspects i wish it was just a little bit different so we have kind of a nylon over mold basically if you will um, so it's got nylon, you know, heavy duty. You got a big nylon belt loop there that'll easily fit on any, you know, with the belt. I think that's about three inches in diameter. It's really quiet. So if you are using this as a hunting knife, that's a very good thing. Um, and it has basically two retention points. One being this little, you know, uh, nylon strap that holds that handle really nice and secure. I cannot pull it out. Uh, and it has a button snap so instead of Velcro. So it's a really good thing. So you pop that sucker open and then there is retention in the polymer insert. So it has a hard plastic insert that grabs around the guard and then you can pull it out, sit it back into place, and there you go. It has this weird button system that allows you to put it basically on your belt without taking your belt off, but it's just kind of wonky. Um, it took me a little while to kind of figure it out. Uh, it's decent, it gets the job. And even though it is snug in there, you can see and when I do that, you know, I mean, it, it wobbles back and forth, but the retention is to keep it, you know, in there. So pro and con. Again, it's kind of like I'm 50-50. I've had knives with way worse she's, but uh, I've also had knives with way better she's. So I'm, it's kind of middle of the road. Wish that it was a little more streamlined and just a little bit different. And I will probably end up eventually upgrading to Kydex for this knife. So as I said earlier, I gave you that price point. I bought it for about 26 bucks. The normal going rate is closer to 40 um, you know, when we look at like the heavy duty companion, which is very competitive in its designing, um, you know, you can get that with both, uh, stainless and high carbon, uh, versions that are out there, you know, those will go more around like $20. So at the steeper $40 price point, this normally goes at, 
you know, you just got to weigh that. Is that really, you know, the best value? Probably better to go with a Mora first. And then if you want something that has some of these features that you're seeing in the Gerber, then maybe go with that as well when you can maybe find it on a little bit of a cheaper discount. But if you're just not into Moras in general, maybe it's just not your thing or Scandies just aren't your thing still at from 40 on down any price in there i think you're getting a lot of value and you're getting you know gerber lifetime warranty i've had to use that warranty once or twice they have always stood by the warranty so this has that lifetime warranty again and that 420 that we've seen on many gerber knives particularly with gerber strong on which is bomb proof sure it dulls quicker than you know more premium steels that are out there but if you really want to upgrade you can go with the s30 v version and that guy runs around between like 90 and 110 dollars just kind of depends on who what when where why those will be included in the links below this is just the kind of even lighter more budget friendly version for those of you who don't want to break the bank but want usa made and want this kind of um, general utility hunting camping style of blade well folks there you have it thanks so much for coming over here today i hope this video has been fun entertaining but just showing you what this gerber gator is doing why just kind of on a whim i decided to grab it and i really am digging it particularly for that 26 dollars price point uh it does offer something that my moras don't and i like that so it's like i like having versatility and just options when i'm considering my compact belt knives and i will be having to uh, get some sort of kydex for this because i think the knife itself deserves a slightly just slimmed down sheath that has more lashing options would be a great like shoulder strap knife for backpacking and hiking um, in that regard so i'll have to get a custom for this but uh yeah i dig it guys it has a lot of versatility a lot going for it not a whole lot of negatives um, and particularly if you can get it on a steel you know under 40 bucks i don't think you'll be disappointed so again i look forward to hearing your guys comments your feedback your thoughts on the gerber gator and the gator series in general you can check out again that the premium videos i'll have those in a link below if you want to check out what the more expensive premium versions offer and their capabilities and drawbacks so you guys can decide between the two if you've kind of made up your mind and you're just trying to decide should i spring for the extra or stick with the budget friendly i'll have that in those uh links in the box below as well so check us out on instagram and facebook as well the other video popping up subscribe if you're not a current subscriber throwing up content like this all the time and finally guys always remember stay equipped stay prepared and we'll see you out there